God and Other Delicacies has a weekly newsletter. If you'd like to subscribe, email me at godsdelicateshow at gmail.com and I'll put you on the list. Hello, everyone. Welcome to God and Other Delicacies. I'm Nicholas D'Augusto. I love listening to people talk about how God and religion have influenced them in their lives. How do they feel about this topic today? It's endlessly complex. It's unique to each individual. I just think it's a topic that gets into all aspects of a person's life. I have a lot of fun talking about it. I hope you enjoy being here. Thank you for being here. Let's get into it. Today, I have the privilege of welcoming Jeff Astroff to the show. Jeff is a television writer, producer, and showrunner. He wrote on Friends in the early years and will happily tell you he has absolutely no regrets about leaving the show while it soared into TV history books. Mm. <laughs> he also wrote for the award-winning series The New Adventures of Old Christine, but most importantly, he created the critically acclaimed all too painfully short-lived comedy trial and error in which I starred as Josh Siegel. Oh, too soon. Jeff gave me the best job of my career to this oh. point, and I also won many dear friendships out of the gig, including the one I share with him. Oh. Welcome to the show, Jeff! Wow, I didn't realize this would be such a sad show with a tearjerker start. Yeah, it ends, it, too... I try to get it, it always ends in a puddle of tears, that's the goal. Ah, that's good, puddle of tears. <laughs> Pot. Puddle <laughs> of tears, that's the yeah, next... there you go. That's the next hour. Um, okay, this is good. This is look how prepared you are. It does not surprise me since you are the most prepared actor I've ever worked with. Yeah. Hey, man, it's the uh, it's the only way I know how to deliver it. You know, I I uh, I don't know, man. I just take this. I take shit seriously. Um, I, I I have to say though that one of the things I do um, I do like about you and our. Uh, Painfully short-lived uh, series, but still great. critically critically acclaimed. critically acclaimed series um, is that we we actually had a lot of people of faith on the show, and and I actually like that. I like working with uh, people of faith. I am a person of faith. A, yes, a puff. Well, it's one of the things and, that I'm I, you know it's very excited that you're here to talk about. Uh, but yeah, man, it, the show was beautiful in that way. It was just you know what? Not only just people of faith, but curious and interested and smart people. So conversations yes. were very right. fluid and open and no right. one was, you know, people come from different backgrounds, but people were always just very engaged with each other. Like, yes, of course. And we but, were never, and what was interesting about our show is that because we shot basically, uh, every scene was basically one long take, there was very little separation. You know how you'll be right. on a show and although, you know, when you're doing, I guess when you're doing, you know, stage shows like multicams or something, you're usually always there as a cast together. But, you know, being on like a single cam show, uh, oftentimes certain cast members never cross paths. But that was never the case with trial and error. We were always we were often always in the same place. You know, in a day you'd have, you know, we'd all you know, I'd be there with Sherry and Steven and then Jamie would be there a part of it and Michael Hitchcock would be right. in there so we always had a good group of people around or often I, I didn't realize that in the pilot that I had never done a single camera show before and um, I didn't realize uh, I only had done these stage plays of uh, multi-camera shows, yeah, including yeah, yeah. Friends, which I, I left right at the right time, by the way. Um, oh, good. Eight years. That's, what, that's exactly what eight, I yes, wrote. Yes, it was right. <laughs> it was going downhill. It was a slow hill. Uh, well, look, that, you know, you uh, the uh, Adventures of Old Christine. It was a slow is... hill that went up <laughs> for seven of those eight years. But then it, then it dropped. It, and it was canceled. Yes. After 10 seasons. <laughs> Anyway, let's voluntarily, say, voluntarily canceled, self canceled, <laughs> self canceled, suicide, <laughs> a show suicide. A lot of shows don't kill themselves. Friends did. Yes, um, <laughs> only, and only ten years old it was tragic. Anyway, let's talk about something else. This is sad. Well, so um, something less controversial. Uh, like God. Yeah. Well, we were just kind of closing on like what we love about trial and error, and you know, um, did you want to complete your thought on like you it was, you had usually done multicams, but you want something uh, about so, doing? So yeah, so and then I I didn't realize that Jama had not worked with um and in, in the during the pilot. Jama had never even been on our set, like had never been a taxidermist, never oh, been. Oh, wow, right, yeah, because right. she, where her scenes were in the court, and uh, that was off right. location on the pilot, spoiler alert. And um, <laughs> yeah, if I you're flying that. JetBlue now, um, <laughs> turn to uh, your TV console in the seat in front of you, you'll see Trial and Error, and you go, why did I miss this show? And believe me, you're not alone. <laughs> um, and um, no, but like Jama's like, Jama didn't get to work with John a lot. She didn't get to work with, and it seemed like she did because the way it was cut together, And, and um, but that's the magic of TV. But I, mm. I, I believe that... Um, I believe that you can see chemistry and, and, you know, and the fact that you guys loved each other was so, it was, it was such a love fest. 
Um, it was such a beautiful experience. But let's jump in. All right, let's so they're, go they're yeah. the same two questions uh, at the beginning of every every show. Mm-hmm. The first is, what did you have for breakfast? Uh, I did not. I, I have a cup of coffee and I have this uh, like 110 calorie like protein bar, uh, All fully right. balanced, healthy. Yeah, healthy ish. I and uh, and my coffee with my sugar free creamer, which I carry yeah. everywhere with me. And I'm and over caffeinated right now. I've had too um, much coffee. Yeah, I uh, I'm going to because I crash because I wake up at I actually wake up at six in the morning every single morning. Um, Is I, that just something that's stayed with you since early kids? Like, is that, or was it just like just working on shows? Or no, just like a no, thing? not You've at always all. Worked? No, my show doesn't start until usually I don't start my room until ten. Once I'm the boss, I start my room whenever I get in there. But I have people get in there at ten. Usually, typically, show hours are like ten to six for for writers, and and I stay later. I'm the first in, last out. But I get up every morning, and I go to synagogue. Uh, oh, every morning wow. I go every from every morning you every go to synagogue. Uh, at, wow, yes, I didn't know that. That's at I mean, 6 I know that you are very devout, but I did not know that you did that every day. That's, every, that's beautiful. Every single morning I go to synagogue and um you know, I wake up, you're supposed to uh, you're supposed to wake up like a lion. And huh. um you know, out of uh you know, so I get up and I roar, literally, I roar and my wife right, like, right in your wife's face. I like no, I don't roar. <laughs> I know well enough not to roar in my wife's face, but I get out of bed. I really try to jump out of bed and roar and it, it does it's uh you know, it's it's positive energy and you're supposed to greet the day that you know, you first thing you do uh, as a as a Jewish person is you say uh, this prayer called Modani and you're basically thanking God for giving you your soul back. Wow. And you have another chance for the day. And uh, usually, at the end of the day, God's got to be like, ugh, why'd I do that? <laughs> Look what he did with that soul today. But uh, wow. that's why, yeah, you say basically... Is, it, is you, that... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you say, in, while you're in bed still, you say, uh, you know, basically, thank you, God, for giving my soul back and trusting me with my soul. You're the, you've given me my soul. You can take it back at any time. Thanks for uh, giving it to me, and I'm going to do the best I can with it today. So beautiful, man. I have so loved... You know, look, man, we became friends through this process, and and there are a lot of reasons for that, and one of them is this type of, um, you know, you're just very, you're so funny, and you're, you can be so acerbic when you want to be, but mm, like, you're we'll so, that out. you're so full of heart, man, you're such a kind man, um, and you, I think you play against it when you, you know, you, you play against my it life. with first <laughs> impressions with people, because you're very quick-witted, and you like to sort of, you know, you just kind of pull the joke of the moment. But you're such a devoted and like, you're very thoughtful. And and these I have questions that will lead us more deeply into these to this stuff. But we might as well just keep going from here because you you helped kind of jump right in. Is that this is just these are lovely. Uh, reverent ways of living. And that's something that's really important to you. Yes, it is. Um, you know, it's funny because I spoke to my daughter's school. My daughter goes to a religious school, a, a girl's school. She's in high school graduating, uh, God willing, in uh, a week or so. And, uh, you know, we talked about being in the, um, you know, being in the TV business. And, and uh, you know, it's basically, of course, they saved us for the last day because who the hell wants to be in it? And I, I adjure <laughs> anybody, if you can do anything else, um, be you know, then go into TV. And my, my teachers, not to derail your thoughts, so please hold your thought, but my teacher said that to me. My artistic director in college was like, if you can imagine being happy doing anything else in your life, then you need to do that because yeah, this, is, this not, is not something you can do like having, like with any split focus. Like this has to be something you do only because you can't think of any other reason you to have do to, anything else. You have to do it. Now, but, but by the way, and I don't want to derail this, but by the way, at the same token, I have, you know, friends and family who've been trying for years and they don't have it. They clearly don't have it. Like you have it. You have, I told you, I think I've mentioned this, there's a, there's a Hebrew word or a Jewish word, word called chen, and like a lot of other Jewish words, there's no quick um, translation of it, but it's really like charisma and it's like, uh, and, and you, you carry that and someone has pain. It's more than that. Someone, they, the way they carry themselves is like you can, you are transcendent. You have that quality. It's Other people sweet. don't have Thank that you. quality and uh, not enough to keep our show on the air, unfortunately, because <laughs> the, the writing wasn't there. So yeah, so, so I mean, um, I, uh, one of the reasons, uh, you know, I talk about this all the time, my religious journey and I did not grow up uh, necessarily religious uh, and, and, um, it was because, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people come out to Hollywood to fill a hole in their lives. And if they don't get success or if they do get success, they realize, um, first of all, my good friend David Sachs um, is a um, fellow writer, also a religious Jewish guy. You know, he says you have to define – I kept using, well, he, this guy's successful, this guy's successful. And he said, like, well, 
you have to redefine success. You could say this guy made a lot of money because I think, and you'll know this, that there are, when people ask you in this business, um, is he successful? Are you successful? I mean, that means most of the people are, are either, are you famous? Have I heard of you? Or um, how much money do you have? And these right, are do you own all, a house in Malibu? Yeah, a house in Malibu. These are all external things. These are not, nothing does, yeah, I'm a successful person. I have two kids that kind of love me. I have a wife <laughs> who's out of my league. I come home every <laughs> night and, uh, you know, I have the same problems other people do. But it's, yeah, I'm, I'm great. I can feed my family. I, uh, and, and my wife, for some reasons unknown, uh, loves me. And, and, and all of that stuff, none of that stuff changes with more money. So you could say, do I have Right now, in in my career, uh, I wish I was working on season three of Trial and Error. Yeah, and, me too. You know, God willing, I'll be working on something else soon. But you know, what I realized was that the people that I saw who had the quote unquote success and famous people, multiple houses, um, I've met some of the richest people in the world, and um, they did not seem happy at all. In fact, I I know of very very few people who came out to Hollywood to fill that hole, and I think that's why. And again, I'm just this is just pure conjecture, is that like people turn to drugs or alcohol or, or sex addiction or because it's like, huh, look at that. I became rich and all of a sudden I'm mm-hmm. not happy. Why is that? And I realize I, I you know, th- there's got to be something bigger than yeah. Hollywood. I think that's, uh, that's something you and I connect on. You right. know, uh, there's something. Um, and also it's, to me, it's the, you know, for us, to some extent, I, I can't speak for you entirely, but certainly I know to some extent, it is the core of our creative powers, too. It's like right. where my, you know, my uh, identity with the faith that I grew up with and my my conflict with that and my sort of struggle to try to articulate for myself the things that I loved about what I grew up with and how much I appreciate what I was raised with and the many things, the many values it instilled with me alongside many of the other thoughts I've been curious to explore, that is the nexus of my religious pursuit right now. And the point is, is that, you know, religion is, as you would say, even as a deeply Jewish um, person, the question really is, is the pursuit. I mean, there's, there's one of the reasons I've always loved, you know, studying Judaism and knowing friends of mine that are Jewish, that... Uh, it was a religion unlike Christianity, which, of course, you know, was something that came out of the Jewish tradition. It was a spin Christianity was a backdoor pilot. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it really was. Yeah, and, and by the way, much uh, it hasn't run <laughs> long, but it got better ratings. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> We've right. We've been running longer, but like uh, the ratings <laughs> yeah, have been low. Yeah, that's right. They well, keep it on streaming, and, you know, it gets a point, too. Well, the, you know, Christianity uh, in, in many ways uh, began to try to have lots of hard answers to things. And the Jewish tradition is not one of hard answers. It's one of, of living many, and of course you should, you can articulate this or rearticulate it in a different way if you'd like, but it seems to be one that embraces the question in a way that I think is more wholesome than some of the ways that I was introduced to it when I was growing up. Uh, yeah, you might say it's less dogmatic. I, I don't know everything there is to know, certainly about uh, Judaism, probably you know, in this room I do, um, which is dangerous to say. It's like knowing a little bit of karate. And (laughs) and, uh, there's a a rabbi I know who said, you know, Judaism is one of the only religions that um, the more you know and the more you learn, the easier it is because you, you know, all these things that you see as restrictions, you actually know the reasons behind them and you know, you understand them and you know that there are certain circumstances where they don't apply. But when you're just starting out, you know, becoming, you know, Judaism has a lot of uh, strictures. And um, a lot of rules, and and if you just say I'm just going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and and then it, it becomes dogmatic. It's it's really about um, it's really about having uh, a love with the person with not the person. I'm sorry, the being who created you, which is God, and you're part of God is God is part of you, and and it's very you know there's there's so many. I mean, it's been around for you know from the beginning of time, um, but when you look at Judaism, I mean, there are answers to everything. It's not, but but there d- does require a degree of faith. Now, um, my friend uh, David Sachs, again, was quoting, I forgot this uh, famous r- rabbi who said, I would, uh, I would never worship a God I understood. Hmm. And because that means that I, if I understood God, then I could be God. And right, right. And it's that's, like God created phrase. us, God created the world, God created nature um, to, because that would be, you know, that's that's our environment that we live in. And, you know, my other friend, it was a good friend of mine who's this amazing rabbi, this Kabbalistic rabbi, 
um, who said basically like God is like, uh, we're like a thought in God's mind. So like if you picture a man inside your mind right now, um, not anyone you know, like that man will think he has um, full consciousness and hmm. he's like going around and in you, but he's in your mind. And if you stop thinking about him, he disappears. So mm. like that's why it's also like you, you know, you could say there's a different way of looking at it, like we're all drops in the same ocean. Yes. Of God. And, yeah. and you know, and, and we can understand it and it's, you know, and it's big and, and people say, oh, that's just a cop out. But why? I don't understand how a plane flies, but I get in a plane. Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. so there's certain things that we, you know, we, we live in a physical world and it's very, uh, it's very easy. I, I want to share this story. I don't know. If no, no, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had a friend who, um, like I said, I do, I, I try to do. Uh, I try to learn, you know, different texts and different ways how to be a better person. So I'm not seen as like a curmudgeonly a hole like you seem to have painted me in the beginning of our program. <laughs> I'm just saying. I look. You can by make the an way, you not. Uh, I make the impression. I know that a lot of people. A lot of people. They. Uh, they come, I see you, Jeff. Astro. They come for my wife. You're they stay on this for me. show. That's right. Just now, um, all you have to do is just like let make, let people hear this radio hour before you go meet them, and they I, will know. Uh, the I lead ahead. It's like the <laughs> yes. It's like the 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 messenger your head of the battle. <laughs> That's right, exactly. Um, so I want to share this uh, this great this great yeah. story because I, I I met this uh, friend recently and and um, he's a Jewish guy and he was um, Australian guy, really good looking guy and um, lawyer and just like an entrepreneur has an Australian accent, amazing guy. He did like cyber something in the IDF, decided he grew up in Australia, but decided that he's a Jewish guy. He wants to serve in the IDF and he oh, did wow. some stuff, loves Israel, loves Jews. Like moved to Israel to serve. Yes. Okay. Moved to Israel to serve. And then I was like, oh, you should come to this class that my friend David Sachs teaches. It's a lot of people, different, varying degrees of faith, varying degrees of, you know, religiosity. Um, and it's a cool class. My friend David was a writer on, on The Simpsons and you should, you'll have a better show when he's on because he's not curmudgeonly at all. Oh. He, what you see is what you get with him. Oh, come and, on. And these... But um, so I said, you should come to this uh, class with me. We learn Torah every, every Wednesday morning at the Coffee Bean, and it's fun, and a lot of comics come there and writers, and, and uh, he's like, I don't think so. My friend said, I don't think so. I said, why not? Why not? And he said, um, well, honestly, I was like, why not? I want to come. He goes, I don't believe in God. Hmm. And I was like, okay. Um, and so, you know, I, I kind of asked him why, and he said, because bad things happen, and, you know, that's theodicy. Why did bad, if God is good, why do bad things happen? And, and as my friend David Sachs will say, like, the and my friend Rabbi Aaron will say, like, the core belief in Judaism is that God is loving, and that you could, uh, my friend Rabbi Aaron says, if you uh, substitute the word love anywhere you see God in the Torah, in the first five books of Moses, the Jewish Bible, that's what you should do. Hmm. Love did this in a way that we don't understand, the same way that you have a son that sometimes you'll discipline, and he cries, and he doesn't understand why you're mean to me, why you're mean, and he will uh, say those things to you. Hmm, why yes. are you making me do this? Why you can't I play? Why can't I stay up? Why can't I do Xbox? All the things I have. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. so I've my, already, I've got a two and a half year old, I'm already yes. feeling this. So my friend, and I'm going to find this, forgive me, I'm, I'm looking at my phone just because sure. I'm going to pull up a picture here. So my friend... Um, Everyone that's listening can see, so it's yes. this is okay, good. This is good. They can they can see. You go check your own phone. So uh, so my friend of mine said, you know, I don't believe in God, and I said, uh, okay. And he said, look, he said I would, you know, he said why do bad things happen uh, if there's a God, and you know, I said, look, I can't answer that. I know that th th we're going to find out. You know, eventually, that's one of the tenets of Judaism. There, we do believe in a heaven. We do believe in you know uh, afterlife, and you find out these things. And um, he said, if there was a God, if God showed me who he was, if God showed me and proved himself to me, then I would be uh, the first person, I would be the most religious guy you know. And I said, I don't think you would. And there's this rabbi, doctor, uh, this South African guy, uh, Rabbi Akiva Tatz, a genius guy, who tells a story about that. And he says, you know, it's not really true. People smoke cigarettes and they know it kills them. People do lots of dangerous things. And they know, you know if you smoke cigarettes now, you, no one's going, wait, I have What? How did that happen? <laughs> How did that happen? Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, you know, cigarettes yeah. kill you, you do it. You know, you're an obese person, you eat a chocolate cake. It's like, wait, that made me fat? So I told him, I said, I don't think so. I, don't, I said, I just, I don't think so. I, you know, you're, you're a smart guy, and people have, the world is created in such a way that we are physical bodies and we get pleasure. And uh, we don't like being told what to do. So you don't believe in God, and I don't think God can necessarily prove otherwise. You could either open your eyes and see everything, 
um, or not. So anyway, so he said, okay, we left it there. I don't push anybody. I don't proselytize. I live my life. And, you know, he had to go back to Australia to, um, to get his visa. And then he comes back a month later, or two months later, and he goes, hey, um, I'm, uh, I'm back in town. Uh, do you want to get together? I said, I'm going to this Wednesday night. Uh, th- Wednesday morning thing. You want to come? He's like, ah, nah, nah, nah. and I said, you don't have to come. He says, well, I want to see you all come. Where is it? So I sent him the email and it's a corner of Smithwood and Pico. It's a coffee bean where I go Smithwood and Pico. So he says, he texts me, he goes, oh my God, the most amazing thing. I didn't know where that was. So I Google mapped it. And this is the image that came up. If you do what? Google Street View, so he Google Street Views uh, to find out where this place is, and there's a picture. I'm showing the radio right now. It's a great prop for radio. Uh, there's <laughs> well, a pic- what I'm seeing is Jeff sitting with this gentleman. Right. So Both this of their is, face is slightly blurred out by Google. By by Google. <laughs> yes, we're not that good looking that we could show. <laughs> Nick's face would not be blurred out. <laughs> anyway, so when was that taken? That picture was taken um, when he and I were having a conversation two months ago about whether or not. He, why he didn't believe in God, and that if God proved himself, he would be the most religious wow. guy in the world. So he Google Maps, Google Street Views it, sees that picture, and he said, that's a coincidence. And I said, don't you see what happened? Yeah, wow. Don't you see what happened? And so it, to me, that, that happened yesterday, and it's just like a miracle story that if you, if that's you open beautiful. your eyes then you can see God everywhere. And, you know, and he did not become... If that was me, by the way, a beard would sprout and I would start, you know, <laughs> I'd move to Jerusalem. But, uh, you know, that's... Uh, that's beautiful. That's, uh, and this is our moment to take a break, but man, that, that, that is gorgeous. Hi, we're back with Jeff Astroff, and, uh, you know, whatever. It's so easy to talk to Jeff. I didn't even get to the second question, which is <laughs> the, people, what I always people do. People rarely do. <laughs> but this is, uh, but it, it's fine, because we jumped right into everything that we want to be talking about here. But the question is, that everyone gets, is how and when were you introduced to the idea of God in your life? So, and you talk uh, about how, you know, you're very religious, but you don't come from that in your family. So we're, or you're, at least not, like, they're, you're, your father and mother were not... Religious. Religious. Um, my, um, well, there's a lot of ways to answer this. And I was thinking about this because I knew you were going to ask me this question. I think you mentioned that when we were talking about originally doing this. Well, I try to, like, prepare people, like, just so that I, they know what show they're walking uh, into, you yeah, know? Yeah, people, I, it, <laughs> it's, 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 very, like it's very funny because uh, on, on my show, which you've done, I don't prepare. And you're like, what should I prepare? And I was like, I, I don't prepare. Why should you prepare? <laughs> yeah, and that's I kind exactly, of, pretty much exactly and verbatim it's what you said. how my me. son lives life. And it's really great if you have a voluntary radio show. But it's terrible if you're going to a high school exam. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> and hopefully that hasn't been your message guiding him through his uh, yeah, his yeah, early yeah. years yeah, of schooling. Please, God, if you're listening, and I know you are, <laughs> please help him. Please help him. It is a it is a challenge. So I I was thinking about this this very thought, and I always had a um, I always had a sense of God, and and you know uh, I've heard from like different rabbis, and you know there are people who have God genes, like it's like not. God brand denim. Um, right. No, I was, yes. I was like, wow, interested to know if that's yes. <laughs> like, God genes. Where do you get Eternal. Wow. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so the, um, It went out of business very quickly because yes. they only have to give one. They only, you only buy one. One pair for the rest you of your life. You never come that's back. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. So um, extra, <clears throat> extra, extra large um, <laughs> and big enough for the universe. And so I have that. My wife has that. And it, it, my daughter has that. My son Spiritual guy, not so much. He asked questions when he was a little kid about reincarnation and and stuff, and that he'd never been introduced to it. So, but there are people who are naturally inclined to be uh, have that have that space to understand it, and that's you know the, the, and the there's a Torah thought that all of us in the womb are um, taught by an angel, and then right before you get out, the angel says shh, and then. You have to learn everything over again, but you have that basis that you oh always gosh, come back to God. Oh my gosh, what a lovely image! So that's from the that's Talmud. Very, that's uh, very beautiful. That's a Jewish uh, oral law uh, written down. So, but I remember, and uh, in in kind of an un, I don't know, it's an unsavory way, but I'll, I'll tell you exactly when um, my first my first like connection and and growing up, and I think when if I think if you're not you know, we, we believe, and I believe, that you should ask God for everything. God has an unlimited storehouse. It, it, God, every question is answered. Sometimes the answer is no. And, hmm. you know, it's like with, with your kids. But 
I remember, and probably was like in third or fourth grade, maybe maybe fifth or sixth grade. I, I don't I don't remember, but it was back oh, at least ten years ago, and um, <laughs> it was a, it was a while ago. And there was a new girl who transferred to the school, and everybody um, everybody was into her. Her name was Teresa Truesdale. And oh, I still great. This. great, great. Great name. Teresa and Truesdale. I, Teresa Truesdale, what a great name. I want to Fantastic use that. Again. Name. That's like a name from like a CW show, right? Yeah, like, and it's Gossip like Girl. it's already got built in that she's a really honest and straight yeah, shooter. Teresa Hopefully that's Truesdale. the way. It's yeah, so funny I mean, because I don't know I, if that's true what's going to happen here, but because I mean, I, come on, there's true I, I in her dated, name. It's like a classic well, fiction I, name. I dated a girl named Eve Applebaum at one point, <laughs> and I thought that is really, I didn't put that together until Eve. Eve and, and Apple, Apple, I mean, yes. that's amazing. And But we did not sin. Yeah, <laughs> well, unfortunately, as I'm much sorry as I hear tried, that. Eve, if you're listening, she 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 was not yes. educated in how to be I a gone, temptress just quite I yet. Should have gone with uh, Sheila Devilowitz, <laughs> but alas, I did not. Um, okay, so okay, so you're about to Susan fifth or sixth grade, but I did a couple of basic okay. questions. So are you Teresa, in Jersey? What are you in Jersey at this time? Where, where no, were you raised? Where, uh, I Long forget. Island. Long Island. Long Island. So and, okay. and really, the anus of Long Island, <laughs> and. Um, so the Long South Shore. So anus. shout out <laughs> Long Anus, nice. Shout out to Seaford. Um, so, okay, go on. So anyway, fifth or sixth so, grade. So so maybe Teresa six, Truesdale. Maybe sixth grade. And Teresa Truesdale comes to school and, and every all my memories of her are in slow motion. And mm. she is a really, really cute. By the way, if I saw her. Right, now, like you have I'm a gift sure, running in your head. Yes, of, her. of course. <laughs> and she was I didn't remember exactly what she looked like, which is probably nothing what she looked like. In my mind, she looked <laughs> a little bit like um, uh, Eleven from, from Stranger Things, but like that. Uh, like, I don't really know, but okay, go on. But like even maybe longer hair and less blood coming out of the nose type of thing. <laughs> and, um, but she was, everybody loved her. I mean, her name was Teresa Truesdale, and, and uh, everybody loved her. And there was no chance that I as the probably the, the second to least popular kid in school because um, I didn't have I any, like that there, you also know exactly who was the least popular yeah I was third I was the third <laughs> least popular kid in school okay. at the time but there was no chance I was going to be on so everybody likes you know Teresa Truesdale and I remember going home and praying to God that Teresa Truesdale would like me it's like please God will get to please God and I think it was a let so I even had this notion that God was in charge of that, and even though I was not a religious fella. Um, please, God, let Teresa Truesdale like me. Please let Teresa Truesdale like me. And I just remembered that, like really, really praying with no basis for anything other than I knew that really it would take a miracle. I knew about miracles. I'd seen the Ten Commandments. I knew that it would take that type of splitting of the Red Sea to get Teresa Truesdale to go so far down the list. <laughs> To really 297th place. <laughs> I could say I was third from the bottom, but I'd say, let's say more optimistically, I was 297. <laughs> more, I like up that more optimistic. I was optimistic 290. Number. Actually, there were 305 kids in my graduating class. I All finished, right, so I you were 303. So, so I'm the 300, she would have to go deep. <laughs> yeah. And really, like, I was, I was praying really hard, and I remember in... Probably a couple of days later, there was like this scuttlebutt in this hallway, and there's like people mumbling, and they couldn't believe it. And the rumor had gone around school that Teresa Truesdale liked me. Wow! And it was I couldn't. I it was the same feeling I got when um, I was water skiing, and all I wanted to do was ski on one ski, and um, it finally happened, and the ski fell off, and I was on one ski, and I was like, "Oh my God, I'm on one ski," and I fell. And that's what happened when Teresa Truesdale. So I went over her house. We hung out. You know, I would go over her house. And my dad was like, she likes you. I'm like, shut up. She does not. And we, <laughs> Teresa Truesdale and I hung out. And it was against all odds. And then I fell off the ski. I couldn't. I couldn't. I flew too close to the side. I couldn't right, handle it. I didn't right. feel like I was worthy. But but that's my first, as unsavory as it is, and is, is my first God memory was like, please, God, let Teresa Truesdale. And there's really... As much as the story I just told you about God showing a picture of this guy, by the way, that was the exact place that those one ch table over from where we learn our Torah, it was me and him and God saying, my friend David Sachs said to my friend, like, that's God saying, I see you, I know mm. you, I'm in your life. Whether or not you admit it, I'm watching you in the way that Google does. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I had that comfort. There must have been a comfort of sort knowing that, wow, I can ask the creator of the universe who could split the Red Sea to do something almost as improbable is to get Teresa Truesdale to flip over that list and start from the bottom. 
and wow. really skip over two people to get yeah. to me. Three, <laughs> I like three I like people. That, that would be to, no two people. people. It would be uh, Rick. St- she, st- he st- she still had to go down past her first and second choice at that point. It, she did not go out with either <laughs> uh, Rick Kale or Seth Manoik. Uh, Amazing. She went, like a writer, you remember all these names. Oh, I remember so, so well. I remember everything. Uh, I I, this is one of the, not that this, I don't want to derail it down this road, but I have another friend of mine who I grew up with who's a writer. And he, um, he's like my, like my, my separate hard drive of like every memory of ours from grade school. I can be right. like, so where, who was our teacher in second grade? And who was that girl? And he's like, you know, miss you know, this was this and this and that. And then he just, he has all of these names. Anyway, I, it doesn't right. surprise me at all that you have all these names locked away, that you have all these, yeah, you I have have all the, these experiences I, still very accessible to you. I, and I, I have to tell you, I'm really glad that I do, because if I had known, I had gone back to my, uh, it's very funny, this is derailing, but I went back to my 20th. Uh, high school reunion a number of years ago and and um, I went with Shawnee because my wife is gorgeous. I'm like, oh, I'm going to show Shawnee. Yeah, yeah. And, and, Let's and, maybe Teresa will be there. Yeah, maybe Teresa <laughs> Teresa. No, she didn't. She, I don't know what happened to her. I think she might have either left or was just part of my imagination. <laughs> but um, either one or just part of a story. I made the whole thing up. Yeah. It's totally fine. No, anyway, uh, it's it worked. Story. It served the purpose. We'll edit that part out. Um, so, <laughs> no, I don't know why. She like transferred out afterwards. Um, and she was just there maybe for God to say, I'm in your life. Who knows? That that, that could have been, the universe could have been, yeah. you know, directed that way for me at that moment, which I believe. And um, I remember going to that high school reunion, and um, I brought an extra pair of pants. My wife's like, why are you wearing pants? It's like in case I get into a fight. So that may, I like, what she think was going to happen? <laughs> Like, that you'd need pants. I was like, I don't know, in case, like, I rip my pants. So, like, you're going to go to a reunion. We flew cross-country to go to a reunion to the point where you're going to fight someone and, like, rip your pants, shit your pants? Like, what's going to happen <laughs> with your pants? I was like, I have no idea. And then so I ran to my best friend, Seth Manoa, who was the least popular person in school, God bless him. And he had also brought an extra pair of pants. How funny, but what? What I know, it's a very weird, Amazing. specific, but uh, it's nothing to do with God. Um, but it but it does, um, it does say genes. a lot about what position you felt like you yes, were in at the in time. Yes, in the school. And, and, everyone was, could... and I was treated like a hero because I was uh, writing for the show Friends and I'd used a lot of their names in the show. And they're like, oh my God, you know, oh, wow. Hollywood, take a picture with me. And I'm like, and they're like, you hate me. I'm like, no, we don't hate you. It was like, yeah, you made me. And I remember Patty Howard, who's now a Facebook friend, uh, passed around this list uh, that had um, all the boys were uh, judged in terms of uh, looks, body, and personality. And I got straight zeros. And I was like, there's no chance I get a zero in personality. No chance. Yeah, come on. You know, they were just, that was, that's just cold hearted. I remember. And I remember. That's just mean. I straight remember. up mean. It is straight up mean. Anyways, and now you get so to you talk know. about it on the radio. Yeah. Um, so mm, reaching <laughs> thousands of Omahans. <laughs> well, hey, and your audience and my audience <laughs> yes. in Long Anus. So <laughs> I, so okay. One thing I wanted to get back to was, so your parents were 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 your parents both raised Jewish? Yeah, they were raised Jewish, but it's but yeah. they both kind of totally left the synagogue. Like they never went back. In your um, in your youth, no, 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 they did. We did. We belong to. Uh, was that like the equivalent of what what for Catholics is like? We go on Christmas and Easter, and that's it. You know. Yeah, like we we did a little bit more than that. Like I fasted on Yom Kippur, and um, you know we ate uh, matzah on Passover, and uh, but I, but I didn't know anything about the Sabbath. You know, my grandparents were my dad's parents were my dad's father was uh he came from Russia in 1918 and he but he kind of kept it to himself and and it was very very difficult and you know to give credit to that generation because you know the a big part of being a religious Jew uh is that you can't work on Friday nights and Saturdays right now back when a lot of the Jews came in the 40s and 50s to after the Holocaust um and even before then there was a 7 day work week in America right and I, I had not thought about this, but this is really fascinating. So yeah, uh, this a is really lot of people, inclu- so including my grandfather, a lot of people would work for six days, get fired, and then have to get a new job every week. Wow. So, you know, especially if you came from Europe, if you came from Eastern Europe where literally your whole family was burned, because, you know, most of the Jews in Europe were burned, burned and, and, and killed in, in, in the Holocaust for being Jewish. So you're coming to America, which the, you know, the tired and back when you could come here as a tired and a puddled mass. Right. Um, you come to America and it's like, 
God's not going to see me here. I'm not doing this. And a lot of people did that. And it's, again, you don't, I don't judge those people because I never, you know, my hardship is that I'm parked on the sixth floor of the structure and I'm furious and I feel like <laughs> life can't get worse for anyone. <laughs> and because um, that's a challenge God knows I can handle. And, um, you know, so these people came over and it's like, we're not working. You have a family here. How am I going to support my family? All I know is that I know that my grandparents were burned alive, literally, uh, for being Jewish. You know, what is it? Now, God bless the people who kept the faith, because that's why there were Jews around. Um, But, you know, my grandfather did, but did not pass that on to uh, his his children. And my mother, I don't know how many... If you go back long enough on any Jewish family tree, you're going to see a guy in a black hat and a beard. And usually you go back... You know, to me, I'm I'm uh, in my early fifties. You have to go back to grandparents or great grandparents for sure. There's n- there's not a you know certainly a, a Jewish person in their forties or fifties does not have a great grandparent that you know anybody who comes from th- there wasn't there was just you were Jewish you were Jewish and this is how you prayed and this is uh, what you ate and this is what and then you know I think uh, in Germany uh, the first wave of assimilation came and that's what actually before that Christianity was the first wave of like. Let's reform this. Let's not do the commandments. We have Jesus. We, he's going to die for our sins, and you know, and there's a different rule stru- structure. And then the Christians kind of broke off, and and you know, and and believe that Jesus was the Son of God. Uh, Jews don't believe that. And that's the principal difference. Yeah, that's the the hardcore yes. separating point is that the yeah. Messiah has come for Christians. The Messiah has not come for right, and then he Jew- has to come again. Jewish, right, yeah. he has not come again, and because of that, we've been burned alive for three thousand, two thousand years, um, yeah. over that. And um, but you know, whatever. That's our. That's also a lot. It says so in our holy book that uh, you know that you are going to be hated, and and you brought that out right in the beginning of the show about me. <laughs> <laughs> so prophecy, well, you're, not, you're not hated. Prophecy came true. <laughs> I love. I said the word acerbic. You've mm, used curmudgeon, hated. It is. That's all I hear. That's all I hear. no. I so acerbic. Um, lovingly acerbic. Okay, so I have to usually the somewhat, word a hole comes after acerbic. I have to. Whatever. I have to admit this. From my point of view, this feels like a somewhat dim-witted question. But I. What's a circle? I. I. I it, it's the one with the corners, right? Yes. So. Um, are there in the early 20th century, in the 1900s, are there any Jewish communities outside of Russia and Europe? Yeah, yeah. I they're, mean, they're, they're in Israel, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they're, 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 they still they're remain been, in Israel, despite the fact that there is no Israel yeah. yes, proper the, at the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? for so sure. Th- and, and they're all, are they all over the world at that point? So the, or is it, you the know? main, there were a couple of main, historically, there were a few main diasporas, like all, you know, the Jews came out of Egypt, they settled in Israel. And then from there, um, you know, there were different kingdoms. There were the, the you know, the first, the first king, uh, King David, unified, uh, unified Israel. The second king, his son, King Solomon, wise King Solomon. Uh, he had a good run of, I'm not sure how many years or 40 years. And then after that, there were a series of like bad kings. They split into, you know, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And then um, basically the Babylonians came and destroyed the temple. We had the temple where the Dome of the Rock is today and um, where the Western Wall is. That was the holy temple and God's spirit rested there. And that's where animal sacrifices took place. And that was, you know, that was part of the ritual. And people became corrupt and... um, the Babylonians came, and we were exiled. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar came, exiled us. We were exiled in Persia for um, 80 years, not for 80 years, for 70 years until uh, King Cyrus um, mm-hmm. allowed us to build the temple back again in 70. Um, and um, no, I'm not sorry, not in 70. I forgot when that was. But be, so he, it was 70, 70 years later. Uh, and not all of us came back. A lot of us stayed in Iran, Iraq, and a lot of the community, like the best and the brightest stayed there. And then uh, the rest came back to Israel, and then we built a second temple, which stood for 400 years. And then the Romans took over the world. And at first, and there were different people who took over. You know, the Greeks took over at one point. Sure. And, and, um, but then the Romans came in. The Romans took over the world, and, and they were cool with us, and we had a Roman governor. But then people wanted to, you know, there's... You know, the, the whole Talmud has talked about that, and that's in Jesus' time. And basically the Romans had enough of these, uh, you know, these Jews who were like a, a, a pinprick in their side. So they destroyed the temple, uh, the second temple. They destroyed the second temple. 
And um, that was during, you know, Jesus's time. And they called the land, uh, they changed the name of the land from Israel to uh, uh, Palestinia, uh, named after the, as a poke for the Jews, that because uh, the Philistines were the uh, inhabitants that the Jews always fought with. So it's like, we're going to call you that. And then... Mm. Um, but at that point, and then the Jews were taken into exile, really, you know, before that, there were Jews in Africa, there were Jews in Yemen, there were Jews in, you know, Ethiopia, um, Jews all around the world. And there was a way, different waves of immigration, I'm sure, in the early 1900s, 1800s came to America. It, it was always tough. There were always been Jews in Israel, always Jews in Jerusalem. And even there were Jews in the 1600s in America because they were traitors. Oh, wow. All right, well, we got to take a break, but the, anyway, it's fantastic. We'll be right back. I wanted to get to at least one aspect of this, which is when then did you make the choice? And was it difficult for you while you're growing up with your parents having not been religious? When did you make the choice to be to become deeply religious or more so, more devout? Okay, so and was it and what and was there any tension in the house as you did that? Oh yeah, so you know again we we grew up in, with a knowledge of the holidays for sure, and we and I remember my grandparents being religious on my father's side and my my grandmother. Lighting uh, Friday night candles. My grandfather, you know, putting on tefillin, which is what you you wrap around you, um, you know, every, every morning uh, except for Saturday, which I do every morning. Um, and um, you know, it's but I always had a sense I was Jewish. And this is the thing about Jews is that even if you don't have a sense of Jews, you're Jewish. People do, and you can't mm. escape it. People know, and um, so I was. I had swastikas carved on my locker in school. Wow, um, that's yes, so insane. That was called, man. Uh, yeah, I had my big, uh, it, 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 my big moment. Gosh. Of, of standing up to a bully was when uh, this guy, Craig Ackerman, now, uh, who I saw at the reunion, he's the reason I bought the pants, uh, who's now like a, just a big, giant, old, fat guy. Um, yeah. Some sort of retired uh, second-tier law enforcement, probably mall security. Um, right. Um, right. Thank you for your service. <laughs> and um, yeah. he, I'm sure, doesn't remember it, but he was wearing a student's for Hitler button, and the whole baseball team wore students for Hitler buttons. And it's hard, you, you know, you, no, this is, this is, this is, yeah, this is 1980s, early 1980s, Long Island. And nobody said, uh, the coaches shook their head, and only two kids, and I'll say their names, Bob Germano and Anthony Sabia refused to wear. Only two kids in the whole baseball team didn't wear that. Students for Hitler buttons, and I really felt like, wow, it's happening again. And um, I remember that I was playing tennis back then. I, you know, back then the sun was good for you and you would wear oil when you played tennis and no shirt. And I'd started working out a lot. That was good for you too. And, um, you know, just like lifting weights, I was playing tennis. And I remember Craig Ackerman said, um, he said, nice body, kike. Wow. And on one hand, it was like, nice body, that's good. But then <laughs> kike is like, that's not good. Yeah. And he said in front of the whole team, and I remember I was playing tennis with my dad, and this is an indelible, mo indelible moment, and I was playing tennis with my dad, he was on the other side, and I was just like, "It's this is so humiliating. The fact that I was just wearing like these white, like short, short gym shorts and nothing else and playing with a wooden tennis racket was not humiliating. <laughs> um, and, um, and probably, only, head, the pictures, probably a only, only the pictures now when they yes, come out. And of, probably a headband. On and, birthdays. Uh, if I could look like that now. <laughs> My um, kingdom for a headband and, and <laughs> hair to put in it. Uh, so we, um, I, I just had that moment of thought. Your father like, hears I'm, it too. He was on the other side. We've never talked about this. My father's never, and I've never talked about this moment. He was on the other side, and I just turned around, and I remember I was just like, I made the choice that I was going to have to kill him or die. I oh. really did. And I said, what did you say in front of the entire baseball team? And he said, you heard me. And I said, I didn't hear you come over on the side of the fence away from your team and tell me what you said. And I really, at that point, I thought, I'm going to kill him, and I'm mm. going to go to jail, or he's going to kill me, but it ends now. And he said, mm -hmm. I said, what? He said, I didn't say anything. I said, I thought so. And he walked away. Wow. And that was like a turning point in my life. And I became not popular, but I moved up to the middle of the pack. Right. Teresa Truesdale would not have, be, have gotten away 
for me then. She would have. You were easily. One, I was one fifty six somewhere in there. You were like the one fifties. High two hundred. Let's say. Um, but let's not go crazy. So now, okay. So anyway, so so that, so but, this is an ex- yeah. But but uh, uh, let me let me tell you. Of the, course, the, of course, I'll tell you the exact story. So um, well, uh, before you get into that, why not? Why haven't you spoken to your father about that? Do you remember? Did he not address? He witnessed this whole thing. He witnessed his son have a. A, 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 an adult uh, moment, like a man making moment. He was on the other side know? of the court. I don't know. I, you know, it's part of my uh, it's it's selective memory me. on this. It was just embarrassing. It's like you know, uh, you know, he he didn't know. You know, he you feel alone. Hmm. Yeah, I felt alone, probably. I wow. say I just felt alone. And I'm sure he said, "Come on, are we playing or not?" I'm sure that was his reaction. Right, right. Yeah, like, know, let's just move past it. But yeah, wow, interesting. Um, interesting. Okay, so you're going to say, "Here's what. Here's the real." Okay, story. Okay, so 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 the story is, I always had, you know, I had a sense of, uh, I had a sense of being Jewish, and and um, you know, even before that, and I talk about the, my story a lot in Hollywood and being, you know, observant in Hollywood, and you know, I remember I I had won um, this. Um, contest called Funniest Man on Wall Street, which I always say it's like... I, I, yeah, we have talked about this yeah, and the I... Jewish I, I high tell, jumper. It's amazing. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, it's so cool. And the competition was supposed to be on... Um, the, the, the prize was that I would be on the Ha Network, which was uh, the precursor to Comedy Central, which is kind of the punchline of the story. And I was like, you, I'll be on TV because I won this. I'm like, this is unbelievable. And it was like, this Wednesday night, you're going to be there. And I said, this is great. And I checked the calendar. It was Yom Kippur, which is the holiest day of the year. And I thought, like, oh, man, um, I can't do Yom Kippur. And I thought, like, and not that I was so religious, like, uh, you know, but it's like I I fast on Yom Kippur. And I also didn't want my grandmother to not be able to see me. Mm. I said, ah, can I not do it? And they said, all right, we'll try to reschedule, but it's Yom Kippur. And I was like, ah, I can't do Yom Kippur. And then the Ha Network was bought by Comedy Central, and they went a totally different way than Funniest Man on Wall Street. And they've done okay. Um, (laughs) But it was kind of like, I remember kind of being mad at God for that. And uh, and I remember, and I always tell the story, like the second time I really like wanted to cash that in was when there were two TV shows uh, that I was up for. One was called um, Blue Skies, which starred like Corey Heim and some other girl, or Corey Feldman, one of the Corys and this other girl. And it was two guys and a girl owned a travel agency. And there was another one called uh, that starred Courtney Cox, who was the one of the uh, Alex Keaton's girlfriend on, on on Family Ties. And that show was called Friends. And I was up for both those jobs. I was please God, please make up for me with the Ha Network by letting me get on Blue Skies and. He failed me again, and I wound up working on Friends. Um, right, but there you um, go. that's good. Yeah, so so I dated. I dated um, one of the big breaks in Reform Judaism is uh, Reform Judaism. Basically, um, the, the, the traditional Judaism is that God, you know, gave the Torah to Moses. We have these obligations. Uh, God, Moses wrote down, you know, the the book. We have this oral history. Most of the laws in Judaism come from the oral history that also came down at Mount Sinai, and those are traditions we've had for thousands of years. Reform Judaism, I think, in the 1800s in Germany was just like, this is too hard. We're going to assimilate uh, the first reform uh, thing. They actually served shrimp hmm. to really say that the Torah is no longer valid. In the same way, you know, that Christianity basically said, you know, there was the, the whole replacement theology. It's like, this is the new five books ended. Uh, we're going to arrange the the prophets a little bit so that it leads into us better segue uh, for, mm-hmm. the, for the backdoor pilot. <laughs> but Reform Judaism said that the you do what you want. And assimilation didn't work out great in Germany. You saw what happened. Yeah. And um, but so that you know, Orthodox Judaism is, you know, you believe that the Torah came from God and you have an obligation to God. But in Reform Judaism, the other thing is that they, they in Orthodox Judaism, the only way to be Jewish is either your mother is Jewish or you are, um, you convert into Judaism. So Reform Judaism said either parent can be Jewish. Um, now, Reform Judaism is is still right the largest, I guess, branch of Judaism, but it's shrinking because Reform Jews aren't having Jewish kids and not Jewish grandkids. I mean, Reform Judaism... Who knows what will happen? God's in charge, but it's 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 shrinking dramatically. Orthodox Judaism is the only the 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 initial form, the truest traditional form of Judaism is the only one that's expanding, uh, that's growing. Um, so I wanted to be on the winning team uh, of that. <laughs> but um, you know, I was so I was dating my current uh, wife, my only wife, uh, <laughs> who was my girlfriend at the time, <laughs> and we were getting along great, and we. Uh, we were on a plane actually to visit my friend uh, who was getting married in New York. And I remember this 
I've told the story a thousand times. There was a guy who was like reading to Hillam or something, and a guy who like had a beard and like a hat, and you know he probably looked like me, but I saw him as like this, looked like, like Tevye and Fiddle on the Roof, and he was sitting next to me, and he was just like praying, and and um, my wife, uh, my girlfriend at the time, Shawnee, said, "What do you think about religion?" And I said, "Oh, why do you have to bring over religion? We're having such a good time dating. We we just agreed that." Little girls shouldn't get earrings until they're ten, and you know, and yeah, our, we were, yeah, everything was going great. Everything was going great. I think our daughter got it when she was two, but um, <laughs> yeah, well, it only listen. You just need to do agree to get yourselves moving like, at a time. Yeah, it doesn't so mean you can't it's go back like on Mike rules. Tyson says: everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. So that's <laughs> there what it was you go. Like. That's what marriage is like: getting punched hey, in the well, face. With. And we'll end it there. Yes, no, I'm sorry. Okay, go on. This is the marriage hour. <laughs> um, anyway, and I was like, oh, why do you have to bring up religion? It's, it will only separate us because she was not. I didn't actually know what she was at the time. Um, but I knew she wasn't Jewish, and when you see her, you know, she doesn't, you know, sky blue eyes, blonde hair, um, razor thin, and, um, you know, cute. And not that Jews are, I, I'm very attracted to Jewish women, I'm attracted to all women, every single one of you out all there. All right, Jeff, everybody heard. I you're, love you're you okay. all. You love all women. Some of the boys. Do. Your wife is better than all of them, but you mm, love the other not ones Not necessarily. Too. <laughs> Anyone. <laughs> The Bible says you're allowed to have multiple wives. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> we'll edit that out. Um, anyway, um, so I said, well, and she said, why does religion have to divide us? And I said, well, because we're different religions. And she said, um, is religion important to you? And I said, like a Jewish person answered a question, a question. I said, is it re- important to you? And she says, yes, it is. And I said, then it's important to me. <laughs> and uh, I said, look, my children have to be Jewish. That's my thing. I want to have Jewish children. I have a obligation. I'm Jewish. My grandparents are Jewish. I, you know, my people have been slaughtered for thousands of years for being Jewish. I can't let it end with me on my uh, narrow, not yet hairy shoulders. Um, and um, she said, "Well, I just want my kids. I believe in God. I want my kids to believe in God. I want my kids to have a good, a structured system and believe in a loving God. And and you know, being in." in good system of values and family is the center of it and education. Do Jews believe that? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> and she said, all right, well, if Jews believe that, way, I can raise my kids Jewish. So that was fine. It's like, she's going to raise my kids Jewish. So then we're at... How Il- old are you at this time? I'm um, uh, 30, uh, 32, uh, 32. Are you on Friends at this time? No. Like, this is after that? No, no she bought high. That. She bought high. I was on Friends, and then I, I met her after I had a deal, and then... It's been a slippery slope down to this. Very, right down to, very, right down down to trial to and error, everybody. Right beyond no. trial and error, right down to the seat. <laughs> back at the number 297. So I don't wanna, no, no, I don't want to derail this too much. So, so, but you're 32, so you're young. I mean, you're... you're yeah, you, but... You, but you, we, you've, you've gone... You know that you have a... You, there is a... There is a God, a deep God impulse in you, but you haven't fully. You haven't. I, I didn't have. By the way, I didn't have the same. I. I you know, a lot of people. Yeah. Yes, a lot of people look at a lot of people look at God as they don't want to be seen by God. It's like just you do your thing, I'll do my thing. Whether or not you believe, I've always believed in God, but it's kind of like you don't want God to like you know. There's this kind of misunderstanding. That's why that my friend Rabbi Aaron says substitute the word love for God in the Torah, and you'll see what the point is. And it's not like, you know, you have the misunderstanding of God as the giant man on the throne. And a lot of that is because of the—our understanding of God has become because of Christian artists who have represented, you know, Michelangelo and, and you know, and, and, and all those famous Christian artists and, and Moses with the reason that Jews were believed to have horns was because Moses' statue— where he misinterpreted the word light, the Hebrew word for light, I guess, is close to the term for horns. And um, oh, wow. he built horns on his statue because it said when he came down, there was like light coming from his head. So he had heads, and there go another 100,000 I've actually Jews. never heard that. There, yeah, uh, there, you can see the statue. About that statue. That's, yeah, that's, it's that's a statue right. in a church in, in Florence, wow. somewhere, I believe. And so that's, there go another 2 million Jews because of that. Uh, right. Because, well, I mean, Christianity. Because of, of a typo. Very savvily got. You know, associated with the high end political structures and continue to stay right. that way. Right, yeah, yeah of course. And, and you know. eh, whatever, it's, it, you know, Christianity also spread, uh, Judaism was monotheism and Christianity spread it, even though the Trinity is is a weird form of that, but we're not going to go into not a weird thought of that. It's 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 a it's a inscrutable no, it's a, part for uh, I think a lot of people. Certainly inscrutable. That's right. So um, anyway, um, but I was going to um, I was going to. Well, have, we're going to talk about how like this is the kind of the genesis of your 
Genesis of your observance. Is, yeah. So is your, so, well, is your so, love with your wife? And um, your, I love my wife. Your, so, your, but, but it goes on from there. So, so we uh, we wind up getting engaged, um, and I'm like, this is great. Last problem solved. We got the earrings thing. We got that. She's. I asked my friends because I'd only been in terrible relationships. I was like, should I marry Shawnee? And they're like, no, she's too good for you. You're an idiot if you don't ask her. And if she would possibly go out with you, you'd be crazy not to marry her. So we got engaged, and we're having shrimp cocktail at Il Cielo on. Uh, Beverly and uh, over shrimp cocktails, she said, so am I going to convert before or after we get married? I was like, you're going to convert? She's like, yeah, I think I should be the same religion as our kids, and we should at least learn about it. Don't you think? You don't, if we're going to raise our kids to be Jewish like you want, let's learn about it. I was like, oh, my God. And I really, like, won the lottery. Like, I don't tell this story uh, anymore because it's like how to get rich by winning the lottery. It's huh. like it doesn't happen. So we took classes at the University of Judaism, and I was the whole time I was like, um, oh, my God, please let Jews believe in good things. Please let us believe in <laughs> like, You're like, and, not uh, sure. Oh, Maybe oh, they're into, go. like, oh, you know, know, stealing Witch, and murder. Witchcraft, stealing, <laughs> controlling <laughs> the media. Where's that class? And it was right. just, Backstabbing. Yes. Yeah, so wow. Thursday is backstabbing. Anti-Semitism, Nick. Wow, <laughs> yeah. that didn't take long. Uh, anyway, so it came out, and it's really mostly, like, you know, short, stocky guys with leggy blondes and Asian girls. For some reason, that's what the whole room was. And um, but you're was all like, just sitting there high fiving each yeah, other. Yeah, like mm, you too, huh? <laughs> yeah, huh. all right. There must be a God. <laughs> um, and you know, we started learning about you know the uh, Shabbat, and we started learning about God and the holidays, and like, wow, this is really wonderful. This is everything. How come I didn't grow up with this? And it's like, well, you did. You did. You had it, and and. Um, you know, so we started uh, lighting candles on a Friday night, and we started, you know, having Shabbat dinner, and I started blessing my daughter. I just, we just had our daughter then, and, and you know, and then I said, like, I'm going to stop working Friday nights. It doesn't make sense for me to work Friday nights, and I happened to be on a TV show, which starred a guy who kept Shabbat, this guy, Ilan Gold. And so uh, they taped on Tuesday nights. So that kind of made it a little easier, and then, you know, the more into it, and then we, then we met this other couple, um, and uh, we met them because at the time we were vegetarian, and uh, she apparently made a great vegan nut loaf. And uh, I, I can't believe that that was the turning point in our career, was a religious <laughs> career, was a vegan nut loaf. And we met them, and they had the first traditional Shabbat dinner, and it was uh, amazing. And there was singing, and there was like just like just telling these inspirational stories, and so much love, and so much food. And we're like, yeah, let's do this again and again. And then we went on this. Uh, kind of retreat called um, Arachim. And Arachim is like, a, it's, it's, a, it's a group basically that, that shows you, it's kind of like so, Torah and science thing. And it shows you, it's kind of like a, and, and not a lot of people respond to this, but it's kind of like all the mystical parts of Judaism that like there has to be a God. And it's like, and first thing is like accepting there's a God and then also seeing like all the things that are in the Bible that are like, scientific. And and again, there is a degree of faith, and not a lot of people respond to this, but I was just like, wow, this is fantastic. Look at the human eye works, and look at the egg. Like, the fact I never even thought of this was that an egg, a, uh, a, a, a single, a chicken egg, is one cell. You ever think of that? No. It's an egg cell. Yeah, that's You're eating really one amazing. cell that's that big, and like, oh, all the amazing. DNA. And that, like, all the DNA in your body, if you take a skin sample from your, your all your DNA is, is encoded with everything about you and the world, and it's like, and, and how much um, it would be impossible to design a human hand, because a human hand has to have so many muscles in it, and it's like, all this stuff is like, wow, there's really a God. Hmm. And that was the first time that I saw that, and it's like, if there's really a God, then this God would probably want you to have a relationship with him. Well, then there should be a rule book, and there is. And it started from there, and then I just started. And then you, you take on things slower, and, you know, the, then you find out there's f- four fast days in there, and there's a <laughs> bunch of stuff that you, days you can't your, work. Your calendar is full. Yeah, and then you're like uh, a lot of horseradish and a lot of bad food and, and uh, <laughs> you know, and a lot of walking. Well, and uh, oh, And then man. it just, like, but I just thought, like, I want to, and we met so many people who, like, led this lifestyle and it's like they were so great with their kids and the kids were so respectful and you know most of the time that works but it's like they were close to their kids like I don't you know Friday nights through Saturday nights there is no electronics and there's nobody and my kids who are addicted like I am to my phone you don't think about it the phone goes off and we play 
board games and we sing songs and we hang out together. And sometimes we fight because that's, like you said, I'm an asshole. Um, <laughs> I, I, I love I think that. that's how you opened it. We'll let the record. Yeah, well, everyone in the been, room is nodding, by the way. I have yeah, been, that's, that's, it, that checks out. Well, I have to take over here. I have been the lucky recipient of um, at least three of your spot dinners. And um, I know I, I always have an open invitation. And they really are a beautiful family environment and it it is um if you guys are free for lunch 12 30 this uh, saturday if you want to come over i love it i'll talk to my wife yeah talk uh, to her. We'd love to have you i we we love the times we've spent with you and i do feel like there's something um you know i we could use you though the table is really lame so far we have giant yeah. <laughs> table. we have we have 20 to 30 people every friday and saturday and uh hey man if i can be a little extra spice i'm happy to be that you know we, we get we get a really lovely vibe of you know both my wife and i are from from a different all of our immediate families are in different parts of the country and um coming to you at your house always felt like a really beautiful family environment and i love the reverence you know i i don't i i, I have a I love learning about your traditions and, and how open you've been about explaining all that stuff to me, as you have been so beautifully open on this show. Wow. And I... We should have uh, recorded some of it. I love... I love you, buddy. Thanks love for being here. And um, thank you all for listening. 